All right, this video is about how to use the pivot by function in Excel. And what it does is it just take some data. So in this case, we have it in A1 through C13, and it lets you summarize it in a lot of different ways. So we will just start here. And by the way, I'm Adam Steinfurth. This is the prolific Oak Tree channel. And now let's go. Okay, so we're just going to type the equal sign and then it is pivot by. You always start off your functions with an equal sign. And then once you've typed the name of the function, it wants a parentheses, and then it will show you all of the arguments that you can use. So in this case, the first thing that it wants is the row fields. And the row fields are, if you imagine your output, it's the labels on the left-hand side of each row. So if we're saying we want to look at the cases by warehouse, let's say the row labels are the warehouse names. And then the column fields, we'll just leave that off for this first example, keep it nice and simple. So we will just hit a comma and the values are going to be the cases, right? Or the, really the number of cases. So we will select the range where those numbers are. And notice that these ranges are the same height and they always need to be the same height when you use these array functions. So keep that in mind. They're both 12 rows. We will hit a comma to get to the last required field, and that is function. So Excel is asking, this is saying, okay, I know you want me to summarize these numbers, but how do you want me to summarize them? Do you want me to add them, average them, etc.? In this case, we'll just say, use the sum function, which is adding them. So we'll type SUM, and that's the last argument that we will use in this first example. We'll hit enter. And this function writes out an array. So the function still just lives in E4 if I double click there, but it writes its result into these eight cells. If you have something down here, let's say if you had a five in cell E6, you would get a spill error. That just means it doesn't have room to write out its result. So you gotta give it some space. We will delete that five. And this is the output. So if we look at saying that there are 13 cases in the East warehouse, and if you add all of them up, it put a total on here, it says there's 97. And let's just check that quickly. We will highlight the values in column B, look down to the lower right-hand corner, and it corroborates our function and says that, yeah, there's 97 cases there. So we're off to a good start. Let's add in another argument to dive a little bit deeper into what this function can do. So its name is pivot by, right? And it's similar to a pivot table. And they have usually rows that are arranged in a column and columns that go along the top that are in the top row. And so now if we add in the argument that specifies what the column is, then we'll get to a two-dimensional table. So we will type pivot by again. We already know what the row fields should be. So we're going to leave that the same, but now we're going to add column fields and we'll say we want to look at, we want to look at the warehouses, but by item. So we will select those items and same values. So we will select B2 through B13 in the function. We will leave that the same for now. We will say sum. And when you hit enter, this writes out a two dimensional table that has warehouse locations and items. So items by warehouse location. All right, so that shows you how it's looking more like a traditional pivot table. And I'm going to move this source data down so we can keep doing different examples while seeing the source data on the screen. All right, so that was cases by warehouse by item. Now let's just pivot it, if you will. So we'll change the rows to the columns, columns to the rows, and then we'll have cases by item by warehouse instead of by warehouse by item. So we will copy this last function. We will paste it here, but we're, we want to change it, right? So all we will do is we will take the row fields and we will cut them we will paste them into the column fields and then do the same thing with the column fields. We'll move them into the row fields and we will
we'll hit enter and now we just turned the pivot table on its side and if we go up to the previous one you'll see the items were labeling each column and now the items are labeling each row all right now let's do something different and we're going to summarize these with a different function so instead of summing them we will say that we want to know what percentage of the total is each one of these values so let's copy this function again and some of my formatting is giving this away but the, this this is still a sum it's just formatted badly let's change some though to percent of so when you start typing it shows you that there's two options here we're going to do percent of and that's a function that was made just for working in arrays because the percent of mechanism doesn't really make sense on its own but inside of pivot by it does a great job so we will hit enter and we'll scroll down a little bit and one thing you're noticing is that the output of the pivot by function is not formatted so i have some formatting left over here from when i was practicing but it's not applied to this last row so i'm going to grab that format with the format painter and i will put it on this last row to see what that's showing and this is now um, summarizing still the distribution of the or the cases by item but it's telling you the percent of instead of the total so instead of 10 it's 75 percent instead of three it's 23 percent so you'll notice if you add these up they come to 100 percent so what this is saying is that the total of let's say nails in the south warehouse is 43 percent of the total of cases all right so that could be pretty handy right let's take this source data and move it down and we'll go on to our next example all right, so if you notice, I wasn't selecting the headers in this source data. So working with headers can be a bit of a problem in these array formulas, but Excel has let us handle that now. It's kind of solved it for us. So the pivot by function does recognize headers and it lets us tell the function what we want to do with them. So let's get this formula again, paste it. And the first thing, let's just change it back to sum to keep it a little bit more standard and now we want to deal with the headers so we will look at these options and after function uh, everything has a square bracket around it square brackets and that's telling you that these fields are optional so if you want to use them you can but you can just completely leave them out of the function but we want to use field field headers so to access that you just put in another comma and then the, and it's asking you what to do with them so we can just say no there's no headers that will leave it the same but what i would like to do is actually include the headers so they can be useful information right so we will extend these ranges if you look on the left you'll see now that these ranges include the data that i wanted to work with and the labels on the top but it can recognize that that's what that is and deal with it. So we will take that zero off and we will say, yes, we do have labels and show them. So let's pick that and move this header down. And then this is showing the label. So it's labeled, what does East, North and South mean? Well, that means warehouse, right? And what do these mean? Well, those are the items. So I really think uh, when you're doing pivot tables, a lot of times these labels get in the way, but you may have an arrangement where it makes sense. So if in this case, it's a little bit obvious that these are warehouses if you look over here, but you can work with the headers and that is how to do it. And we'll go on to the next example where we're going to go back to just cases by item. but we'll say we don't want totals. So let's scroll up here and see what we're talking about. See this row at the bottom that says totals. Sometimes you can have one over to the right. That is there also. We'll just say we don't want those. So let's do a comma. Uh, we still need to type in some. You can tell, I can tell where I am because I'm at the last blue argument. I'm gonna hit equals field headers. 
we're just going to ignore that one for now. It, it was fine the way it was displaying. So you just, just type in another comma and that will skip it. So if you don't want to specify something, just don't. The row total depth. So this is designating the number of each row and the totals on it. And we just want none. We want no totals. So we will say zero. And let's get to the column total depth too. So we'll have to ignore the row, row sort order for now. And we'll do no totals for the columns either. Let's close this off, say that we're done. It's a closing parentheses and we'll hit enter. And now we have, I'd say a bit of a cleaner pivot, right? So we, you still have the locations, you still have the items, but you don't have the totals on here. So if that's the way you want it, that's how to do that. But let's say you want it to be sorted differently. So let's just say, um, I don't like the way this is sorting the items. Let's reverse that order. So we will grab this function. We'll paste it and let's find the argument that specifies a sort order. You can change the row so sort, <laughs> row sort order or the column sort order. And the rows, it can always, I think, be a little bit confusing in pivot tables and in the pivot by function where the rows is really this column. So it's a column, but it contains the rows. So what we want to change is the row sort order. So let's go back to the left until that's bolded here. There, we're in row sort order. I like that little drop down that shows me what the options are. I think I'll get it if I type a zero and then delete it or not, uh, I, but I, how to reverse that is do a negative one, just know that. So I will type negative one, hit enter, and now these items are sorted in reverse order. All right, pretty nice. That will probably be handier if you have a larger number of items. I tried to keep this small so that I could show it without going off the screen too often. And now let's do the number of cases by item and take the column totals off. So that's a different argument. So let's just do a normal pivot by first. Let's get the row fields. We'll make it warehouse. Then we'll say item. Add the values, sum. We'll ignore the field headers. And now we want to deal with the row total depth. We'll, we'll, we'll say no columns on that. So that's a zero if you look at it. And then we'll use commas until we get the column total depth. And we'll just turn that one off too. So we'll say no totals. We will hit enter. And now you get this nice clean pivot with no totals on the rows or the columns. All right, let's use the next argument where we say, let's just paste this first, as it was in our previous example. But let's say we want the columns in a different order. Okay, so you want to see uh, screws first, then pliers, nails, and hammer. There's a, an argument for that. So I'm at column total depth right now. If I use my comma again, I can change sort order. So here, let's just use a negative one to switch those. Easy. Now it says screws, pliers, nails, hammer. Okay, let's move the source data down a little bit. And now we're going to use a pretty powerful function that is uh, another thing that really brings this closer to parity with actual pivot tables that you use through the menus. And that's the fact that we can filter the data. So this next argument is called filter array. And we're going to say, look, I only want to see the nails, right? So that's going to be when these items are equal to nails. You just type it in, put the quotes around it if it's a text string, hit enter. And that is just showing the nails. So apparently there's only tw 21 in the North Warehouse and 13 in the South. Pretty powerful flexibility that it has, but relatively straightforward to use once you try it a few times. Okay, so now we're going to add another set of values into this table, and we're going to do something that 
isn't really documented as a capability of pivot by function, and that is to create a calculated field. So this doesn't have to be complicated and using lambda function, uh, right, and designing your own function. It's really pretty straightforward. So what we want to do, we're going to say, hey, let's get the total weight that's ready to be shipped in each warehouse. So we have the cases, and now we have the weight per case. So what that's going to be is uh, for the screws at the North Warehouse, it's going to be 11 times two, right? So let's just say this is number of kilograms. We will create this pivot table. I'm gonna move this over here. And the first part is the same. We'll say screw, we'll say the items are the row fields. You can do it either way you want, right? The locations are the column fields for the values. Now this is where you make it a calculated field. And I'm kind of proud of myself because I just played around until I got this to work. Yeah, so we said we want to have the cases times the weight. All you do is you just put the formula directly into the values field. That easy, miracle. And we'll, But we're going to say we want to sum them. Usually when you do a calculated field, you want to aggregate it with the sum function. So we'll just use that. We'll hit enter. And here you go. You can barely even tell how amazing you made this because it just puts the calculated values directly in. But let's test this. So it is saying there's 386 kilograms. If you come to the source table and you do some product, which just multiplies two arrays, and you take the cases times the weight per case, it better come up to 386, and if it does, this video is concluded. Beautiful. If you wanna see a simpler version of this, it's called the group by function. That's this next video. Thanks for watching. Prolific Oak Tree, out. Boom.